In the last lecture, we learned how to render a list of product from this product array using this map function. So we are using this map function to iterate over this product array. And for each iteration, this map function is transforming the element of this product array and it is transforming it to this products component and then it is returning it. So for each product inside this product array, in the web page, a products component is being rendered. And this is how we render a list in React using map function. Now what we want is, we want to add this new product object to this product array. Now, the very important question which comes here is, when should we add this new product object to this products array? Should we do it when this product list component will be rendered? Let's try that. Let's see if it works. So I will comment this console.log statement here. And here, we don't want to directly go ahead and add this new product to this product array. That's because even if we do that, this new product will not reflect in the web page. Why? Because when we add this new product to this product array, it is not going to reevaluate this product list function. And if this component is not reevaluated, we will not see the changes in the web page. So here we need to use state. For that, let's scroll up and let's import use state from React library. Now let's go ahead and let's use this use state inside this component function. And this use state is going to return an array. So here let's use the array destructuring syntax. And this array is going to have two elements. The first element will be a variable. Let's call it maybe new product list. And the second element will be the state updating function. Let's call it update product list. Now here to this use state function, we also need to pass an initial value which it will assign to this new product list variable. So here for the initial value, let's pass this product array. So when this product list component will be rendered, at that time, this state will be assigned with this product array. And now let's go ahead and let's update this state. For that, we can call this function. And to this function, we need to pass the new value which we want to assign this new product list variable with. So here to this function, we need to pass the updated value. For that, let's use the square brackets because to this new product list variable, we want to assign an array. And this array should have this new product object as its first element. And then it should have rest all other elements from this product array. So let's copy this product array from here. Let's paste it here. And on this product array, let's use spread operator. And just like on object, we can also use this spread operator on arrays. So when we use a spread operator on an array, it expands the elements of that array into individual elements. And since we are using it inside square brackets, those individual elements will now become an element of this new array. So this array will have this new product object and it will also have all the elements of this products array. Okay, so we are updating this new product list variable with a new array inside which we also have our new product object. And now let's go ahead and let's loop over this new product list variable, this array. Let's save the changes here. Let's go to the web page. And here you will notice that in the web page, it is not showing anything. Let's open developer console. And in the console, we have seven errors. So this is a warning. This is a warning. Here also we have this warning. And then here we have our first error. And the error says cannot read property of null. This PID. Now why do we have this error? We have this error because initially when this page loads, this new product object will be null because we can only create a new product when the page has loaded. 
So initially when the page loads, this new product object will be null. And on that null, we are trying to access this PID property, this P name property, this description property, etc. And that's why we have this error here in the console. So we can fix this by using nullish equalizing operator. For that, you can use this question mark before this dot. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. So now you will notice that those errors are gone. But now we have a new error. And this error says too many re-renders. React limits the number of renders to prevent an infinite loop. Now why do we have this error? We have this kind of error when we try to render a component and when the state of that component immediately changes. For example, in our case, from the app component, we are trying to render this product list component. So when this product list component will be rendered in the web page, this function will be called this product list function. Now inside this product list function, we are creating a state and then we are immediately trying to update that state. Now because of this, what will happen is when we are trying to update the state by calling this update product list function, it is going to re-evaluate this product list function. That means it is going to recall this product list function. So again, this new product list state will be created and then we are calling this function to update the state. So again, it will recall this product list function and in this way, it will create an infinite loop. And because of this, we have this error. Now here I wanted to show you this error because when working with React, you will surely encounter this error at some point of time. And you should know the reason why this error message has been shown. And when you know the reason, you can easily fix it. All right, so this solution here is not going to work. So let's remove this code from here and let's think of a solution. Now one solution which I can think of right now is to cut this product array from here and use it inside the app component. So here, before this app component function, let's go ahead and let's paste this product array. And inside this app component, we have a function called create product. And this create product function will be called when we click on the add product button in the form. And that's when we want to add the new product object to this products array. So we should write the logic of adding the new product object to this product list inside this function. For that, let's first create a new state. So first of all, we now don't need to pass this new product object to this product list component. So I will remove this attribute from here. And we also don't need to set any state for that new product. So let's remove this as well. And here, let's again call this use state function. Okay, and it is going to return an array. So let's use the array destructuring syntax. And here, let's call the first element new product list and Let's call the second element as update product list. And for the initial value, let's pass this products array. So let's copy this name and let's pass it to this use state function. So when this app component will be rendered in the web page, it will create a new state called new product list. And to this, we are assigning the products array. Now inside this function, inside this create product function, we want to update this state. So for that, let me copy this function name and let's use it here. Okay, so we are going to use this function to update this state. Now to this state, we want to assign a new array and that array should have the new product object as its first element. So here, let's assign an array. And this product which you see here, this product parameter is the new product object which we have created using the form. Okay, so the first element of this array should be that new product object. And the rest of the elements of this array should be the elements of this new product list. Okay, so initially this new product list is assigned with this products array. And on this, let's use this spread operator. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. So, okay. So here it says new product list is not defined. 
that's because here we have created this new product list now we also need to pass it to this product list component where we are rendering the product okay so again on this product list let's create an attribute let's call it new product list and to this let's assign this new product list state all right so now inside this product list we have this new product list property on the props object so here we can say props dot new product list with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and now you will see that we don't have any error and all the products from our product list has been displayed here now let's go ahead and let's create a new product so here let's create a product maybe butter let's say price is twelve dollars and for description let's say butter 250 grams and let's say this product is in stock so here we are creating a new product now i'm not going to choose any image for this product for now let's go ahead and let's click on this add product button and you will notice that that product has been added in this product list okay let's go ahead and let's create one more product say avocado let's say price is ten dollars and for the description let's say product description let's say this product is not available in the stock right now and again let's click on this add product button so you will notice that that product has also been created and since we did not select it, this checkbox it is set to unavailable so this is how we can add items to a list always remember that when you are changing the state it should not be done directly inside the component function it should be done when some event happens in the web page for example earlier we were trying to update the state directly inside this product list component and we saw that there we had an error but now what we are doing is inside this app.js we are not updating the state directly inside the app component function instead we are updating it inside this create product function and this create product function will be called every time this add product button is clicked in the web page okay so here we are updating the state when some event is happening this is all from this lecture in the next lecture let's try to understand why we have this warning okay each child in a list should have a unique key let's understand why we have this warning and how we can resolve it